What's up, everybody? It's Ivan with Trout's Fly Fishing, joined by a good friend of the shop from Umpqua, Alec Gerbeck. How's it going, everyone? Alec's really good at fishing. I'm not as good as fishing. But this is a special edition. So the next couple months, we're going to be doing special editions of Five Flies, focusing on certain species. And they just so happen to be saltwater species. A lot of you guys out there are making trips down to the salt in the next couple months. And we wanted to uh, sort of showcase some flies that work for a variety of species. This month's edition will be focusing on redfish. Uh, right? That's a sign, not a fish, but you get the point. Uh, so, focusing on redfish, seeing as I've caught four redfish, one, no, two on the fly, I'm a subject expert now, and definitely you're gonna listen to me. In fact, that's all false. I've, that's not all false, I have caught two on the fly. But we're gonna defer to Alec, who has a lot more experience with this. He actually has a fly that he's designed for redfish, so. That's right. Yeah, so Alec's gonna take the majority of the educational portion of this. I'm just gonna act like an idiot on the side. So here we go, five flies for redfish. Alec, talk to us about redfish and how they like to eat, what they like to eat. This gives a little, uh, little juice. Awesome, so yeah, the, the winter months are a great opportunity to start chasing these things. They happen all year round, but this is when the bigger fish, the big bulls are gonna come in shallow. Um, not only Louisiana, but you're gonna see fish in Florida, you're gonna see fish in Texas, South Carolina, so they're pretty widespread and they love flies. These things are almost just as easy or easier to catch on flies than gear. So anyway, fantastic fish to fish for on fly. And yeah, we have a couple flies we're gonna tell you about that will hopefully accommodate to the situation that you're gonna be fishing in. Cool, let's do it. Five flies for redfish. All right, fly number one. We're gonna give Alec a little shine. Shout out to sandwiches around the world, the po' boy. Alex, pro boy, looks like a delicious morsel. Tell us about it, Alec. So I designed the pull boy a couple years ago when I was down in Louisiana, uh, around the table at night with some buddies, drinking some bourbon, had to come up with something a little heavier, held a big profile, didn't take very long to tie. Uh, this is where the po' boy came from. So very simple pattern. It's just gonna be craft fur and polar fiber with some rubber legs. So lots of movement and not too much material where it's not gonna sink very well. It's gonna sink very quick into the zone and do what it needs to do. It's tied on a jig hook as well so that it's gonna ride true, staying out of the weeds. And uh, yeah, just a, a great fly if you're gonna need to uh, have a bigger profile and maybe yeah. dirtier water. For sure. Uh, what's it supposed to imitate? What a, what's, what's the redfish think this is? So they're not a super picky animal in general. Uh, now that depends, obviously <laughs> things like Panhandle or uh, you know, the Atlantic Coast, they can be. But uh, yeah, kind of shrimpy, kind of bait fishy, just lending yeah. itself to a number of things. So redfish will eat shrimp. What else do they eat? Do they eat mullet? They love mullet, yep. They love blue crabs. They love a little bit of everything. Nice, cool. There we go, fly number one, the po' boy from Alec Gerbeck. Fly number two for redfish, the electric bunny. Alec, spread the word about the electric bunny. Why is this such a great fly for the It looks fish? very simple. Uh, this is a new fly for Umqua last year, tied by Carlos Hidalgo. Um, yeah, it's gonna sink very quick again. Uh, it's a little sparser, not holding as much of a profile. So when those waters clean up a little bit, but you still have a lot of current, it's gonna get where it needs to be and not be too abrasive for that fish. So he, he'll still uh, come onto it right away. Cool. And you talk about clearing water. What are you fishing? Weed beds, are you fishing pot? Like what, where's, where are you focusing your energy with redfish? So redfish are constantly following the bait. Um, so if you have a big high tide, fish are pushing in nice and shallow, that could be way back in some ponds that's not receiving all that muddy water. So it could clear up quite a bit. Uh, so they're rooting around in the weeds. Uh, it's, it could be loose grass or actual growing grass, um, looking for shrimp, looking for crabs, things like that. So again, another kind of impressionistic, uh, pretty shrimpy, kind of crabby sort of thing going yeah. on here. Buggy. Buggy. Yeah. yeah. In the trout world, we call that buggy. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Fly number two, the electric bunny. Whoosh. Like the slide. That was the electric slide. <laughs> oh, 
Fly number three for redfish is the Lil Muddy Buddy. This is also in Blurple. I'm a big fan of Blurple just because it's a fun word to say. It also appears to be a uh, popular color scheme for redfish. Dirty water, I'm guessing that's a... Early morning, dirty water, oh, that yeah, sort of thing. For sure. Talk to us about the Little Muddy Buddy. Little Muddy Buddy is brand new to us this year uh, for 2020. This is a Tony Janik fly. You can see the main difference here is this is going to be an unweighted fly with a weed guard. Uh, so designed for a Florida fishery, this is going to land very soft, it's going to stay shallow, um, and hold a nice small bait fish profile. He does a blurple as well as a tan. Um, but yes, uh, places where it's maybe very shallow, where those fish have maybe gotten a little more pressure, you're going to want something unweighted like this. Size also playing a role there with the pressured fish. With For sure, they down. tend to step things down, smaller hooks, smaller profiles. Yeah. What, uh, in Louisiana, what, what pound uh, test or what uh, leader and tip are you throwing on there? Oh, 25, 30 pounds yeah. most of the time. Unless it clears up, you might drop down a little bit, but yeah. uh, and using up to 3.0 size hooks. Right. Um, guys in Florida are using size twos. Right. So and then they're the using probably what, like? 16. 16, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. Nice, there we go, fly number three. Fly number four for redfish is the Captain Greg, not to be confused with old Greg. It also has a little purple in it, a little tan. Talk to us, Alec, what's, what's, the, what's the good word on the Captain Greg? Yeah, uh, this is a Lex Hockner pattern. Uh, it's gonna mimic kind of a toad or a quan style fly, so impressionistic towards a shrimp and a crab. Um, color combo is pretty cool. The tan and purple, you don't see that very often. Just light and dark, it's yeah. gonna really stick out nicely. Some contrast. Contrast, exactly. Uh, it's also gonna feature a weed guard, which I'm a big advocate of. Uh, some people think it really gets in the way of hookups. My thought is you can always cut that off if you need to, yeah. but yeah, this is allow you to get in the sticks. It's quite heavily weighted. Um, yeah, great fly for you. With the shrimps and crabs, are you, how, when you present that, are you doing short, like twitchy, shrimpy strips? Or are you doing longer strips? What's your... Uh... Good question. So it's more how the fish is reacting to the fly. Um, so if I have a fish cruising or tailing, mudding, whatever, uh, I'm gonna first present my fly and see what his reaction is. If you see him jump a little bit like he's seen it, uh, now I'm just gonna kind of keep it moving, sliding maybe a foot at a time. Uh, if I see that he's not moving fast enough for my pace, I might slow it down, just do little pops. It's more yeah. about keeping the fly in the zone and moving yeah. than pulling it away for a redfish, because. Eyesight's not that great. They're usually in kind of muckier water too. So it needs to be in here. So yeah. whatever I need to do to kind of just keep it right in that strike. So that's go, go for the same with uh, like a bigger profile like the Pobo. You're just trying to keep it moving, but in their zone basically. Absolutely. Yeah. So like we were fishing water that was maybe a foot visibility at the most. Right. So just for them to initially see it well. Yeah. Uh, it drops in, there's a profile, they see it. Uh, yeah. This guy, a little more subtle, you could cast this further away. Um, right. How's their lateral, lateral line? Do they have a pretty decent lateral line? Do they feel stuff pretty well? Absolutely. Yeah. So the drum family, I don't know if you've ever fished them, they, when they spook, they boof, they make this big drumming sound. Um, right. So they're letting everyone know something's up. So yeah, they, they feel vibrations like crazy. For sure. So like a profile, a bigger profile that might move water in dirty water where they can sort of feel that is also something you might want to consider Absolutely. out there. Gotcha. Cool. There we go. Fly number four, Captain Greg. Uh, all right, fly number five. We've made it to the end of Five Flies for Redfish. Big thanks, Alec, for stopping by, lending us some uh, info. We're doing the pop-up crab. This is actually in Bronco's colors, so uh, Bronco's catch fish, apparently, right? <laughs> you got it, man. So yeah, another Lex Hockner fly, uh, the pop-up crab is gonna be essentially a supersized merkin. It's gonna accommodate, again, for uh, conditions that you need a little bigger profile. It's also gonna be featuring a jigged hook as well as a weed guard, so this guy can go into the thick of it and come out clean for you. Uh, definitely imitating a blue crab. You can see that blue olive hue with some orange claws. Um, yeah, really great pattern. Cool. 
When, uh, when you're throwing to redfish and they're chasing the fly pretty hard, uh, should you stop that fly? No. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> that's what I heard. A certain friend out there stopped the fly and his guide told him that was the stupidest thing I've ever seen done. You got to keep it moving, make them finish on it. Uh, yeah. If they just keep stopping, keep stopping, unless he's super hot and just charges right away, you just got to keep that thing moving um, to, to make them finish. It's trout set, right? Definitely, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. No, stri no strip sets. <laughs> no strip sets. That's for weenies. <laughs> yeah, so don't listen to me. You should definitely strip set. There it is. Five flies for redfish. Big thanks to Alec for uh, stopping by. Always appreciate him dropping the knowledge. You guys should uh, watch that fly tying video of the Flexo. That's a also pretty good pattern as well. Also <laughs> potentially a good redfish pattern. Oh, look at that. Have you <laughs> caught him on a redfish? Yes, I have, yeah. Well, no <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. We might be seeing that fly later on in this series uh, with a, a certain fish that I personally hate. So, yeah, there we go. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.